Central Ohio Congresswoman Joyce Beatty is a 54 year member of Delta Sigma Theta and tomorrow she will address the more than 3000 sorority members who are here from eight Midwest states representing more than 125 alumna and collegiate chapters. Beatty tells me she will talk about activism and the member of another black sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha's Kamala Harris. It's important to us, and while we can't tell people specifically how to vote, we can tell them about the issues. We can tell them that this is a time in our country when we have a woman of color who is now the sitting vice president, who has done more for human rights and civil rights, who has fought for immigration reform and laws, who has done more when we think about keeping our community safer. So we can tell the story of Vice President Kamala Harris, and then we leave it up to them. Delta Sigma Theta has a history of activism. Back in 1913, founders of the sorority marched for women's suffrage. Former Congress member and HUD Secretary Marsha Fudge, a past president of Delta Sigma Theta, has been a member for 55 years. She embraces its modern commitment to networking opportunities for black women. I make sure that we are always sitting at the table. We're in rooms that matter. We are having discussions that, that matter. And that includes conversations about the member of another sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha's Kamala Harris. Delta does not endorse, but it presents bipartisan candidate forums and is this year training elections attorneys. So that every single vote that is cast is able to be counted so that people understand the law so that they will not get tripped up and not be able to vote. It is not possible to disguise the enthusiasm here for the possibility that America's first female president could be a woman of color, or the disdain for comments from Donald Trump about Kamala Harris's ethnic heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black, and now she wants to be known as black. I'm used to them. I'm a black woman that grew up in the 50s and 60s, so I'm very used to it. And I just say, poor baby, if he can't figure out anything else to say, shame on him, because he is not moving her one bit. She is the person that is going to beat him and beat him good. We're used to people marginalizing us and making sure that we get reduced to, you know, a number or a DEI hire, if you will. Knowing that our moms always taught us that we have to be twice as good to get half as far and to have that seat at the table. Within hours of word that Joe Biden was out and backing Kamala Harris, the first fundraising call was led by black women. There were approximately 44,000 folks on that call. And from that day forward, we saw various constituencies organizing on their own, demonstrating their commitment uh, to a new type of leadership in this country.